in this video, we understand the terms reorder point, lead time demand, service level, and safety stock. This is part one of a three part video series on reorder point. There are two key decision points for replenishment how much should be ordered and when should it be ordered. In the earlier videos, we saw how much should be ordered. We dealt with the economic order quantity models. In this video, we deal with the second question of when should the ordering happen? And here we talk about the reorder point. What is the reorder point? The reorder point is defined as the level of inventory at or below which an order is placed for replenishment. So you can see in the graph here, the inventory level is coming down. And you can see that we don't any longer assume that the demand is happening at a constant rate. You can see the demand rate fluctuating here. It reaches a minimum point, which need not be zero. The replenishment arrives. And again, it comes down following some arbitrary rate. You see two points here. The first one marked as R1, the second one is R2. These indicate the respective reorder points uh, that were used in these two cycles. In general, R1 need not be equal to R2, which need not be equal to R3, and so on. So these R values, generally speaking, can be very different from each other. The second term is lead time, and lead time is defined as the time that elapses between placing the order and receiving the ordered quantity at the location of the inventory. So the time that elapses between these two time points, this is called the lead time. And again, generally speaking, the lead times across different cycles need not be equal. If the variation is small in the R values and the L values, then we may take them to be a constant for the convenience of mathematical modeling. The third term is demand. Demand is the rate at which inventory is consumed. Demand is units per time. Generally speaking, demand is not a constant as we just discussed, but can vary with time. Demand is ongoing and exists during the lead time too. It is not that during the lead time there is no demand. During the lead time also, consumption of inventory continues to happen as it happened before and after the lead time. So the fourth term combines the idea of lead time and demand together as lead time demand. Lead time demand refers to the total quantity demanded from the inventory during the lead time. In other words, you can see that when we place the order, that's when the lead time begins, the level of inventory was at R1. And when we receive the replenishment, that's when the lead time ends, the quantity of uh, the inventory is somewhere here. So this much inventory got consumed during the lead time. And this inventory, uh, this consumption, this, this, this level uh, of this difference between the two levels is the lead time demand in this cycle. The inventory came down by this much during the lead time. So that is the lead time demand. Similarly, in the second cycle, we see that the amount of inventory consumed during the lead time is indicated by this level, which happens to be, in this case, the same as R2. So R2 is the lead time demand in the second cycle. Because the level of inventory when the uh, lead time began was R2, and the level of inventory when the lead time ends is zero. Lead time demand is not a rate, unlike demand. Rather, it's a quantity. It's a quantity of the inventory that gets consumed during lead time. So we can see that if the reorder point is higher, that means we will have greater inventory levels in the system. There are better chances of meeting the lead time demand, but higher R will also imply greater holding costs. If we keep the reorder point very low, then it means that the inventory levels in the system will also be low, and that will involve lower holding costs, but the chances of a stock out are greater. So now in this video, we have understood four terms, the reorder point, lead time, 
demand and lead time demand. Thank you.